Carson Beck found this number one wide receiver and his number two. This is Locked On Sports Atlanta, and it's time for the Atlanta Football Party, only on Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into the Atlanta Football Party, your home for the best Georgia Bulldogs football talk. It's local insight. You can't get anywhere but right here at Locked On. I'm your host, Tanitra Batiste. Alongside me are Jarvis Davis and Brian Gephardt. This episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college terms and conditions apply. And of course, the Atlanta football party is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Now, did Kirby's message get through to the defense and how will the spring portal window affect the dogs? We'll talk about it, but first, Let's debrief on G-Day. The red and black squads tied 2020 in the annual G-Day spring game Saturday. So let's revisit what we were looking for last week and what we actually got in the game. Jarvis, you said you wanted to see what the look was going to be and how the performance was going to be for the guy behind Dom Lovett. Yeah, you know what? I, and I think those guys, I think the guy that stood out to me the most was definitely Kobe Young. Um, I, I think see, seeing him running around with that number eight jersey on kind of brought back a few little memories of BG. You know, mm-hmm. Terrence there was like, oh, okay. I'm gonna, <laughs> you know, this kind of, you know, kind of bring back a few memories there, which right. was the last guy who had a 1,000 yards receiving. Not saying that, you know, he's going to do that, but I, I, I do feel like that, you know, Carson Beck was able to kind of get some type of connection. You saw him when he was throwing the ball over to the over the middle and it was kind of a ball that was a little off target a little bit. Kobe Young was able to adjust to it and catch it, make that catch it against Dalen Everett, who is a guy who is a starting caliber corner on, on this team. So I really feel like, you know, Kobe Young with his size and being able to take advantage of those 50-50 balls, which he probably is going to be able to get and take advantage of in the red zone. I feel he can be a guy that that um, I feel like he proved that he can be the guy in in the fall, right behind Dom Levin and being that that wide receiver too. And Brian, you mentioned that you wanted to see what the wide receiver and tight end groups could do, but particularly Arian Smith and Van Urasek. Yeah, Arian Smith was uh, kind of a disappointment on Saturday, and I said that going back to last week. It was he had been the hyped guy going up for a few weeks along with uh, Colby Young and Dom Lovett. Um, in terms of what they've been doing in scrimmages and practices and everything. And he had another drop. He had four targets, only wound up catching one ball. So I was disappointed in what he brought to the table. And then with Ben, what's interesting now is I got to hear this guy say his name because I've heard Urisek, I've heard Urisic. You're, you know, like, all right, does it, we have to get through Clemson to make sure we, we say his name right. So we're going to nail it down at some point this off season and have him say it. Didn't see a whole lot. Um, from him would have liked to seen a, a little bit more. It was really that wide receiver group that that shined and, and piggybacking off of uh, what Jarvis had said too. Colby Young, the key word I think that you brought up, Jarvis, is red zone. He's going to be a problem in the red zone when they get inside that 20 and you know the ball is going to be spread out a good bit. But um, Arian Smith was a guy I would have liked to have seen more from. And I'd like to have seen more from him over the last couple of years and it still doesn't seem like he's quite there despite the hype heading into G-Day. Yeah, another thing about yeah. another note about the tight ends, uh, BG. I feel like Oscar Delp and Lawson Lucky, I feel like they'll be fine catching the football. I think they're gonna have to really start the lockdown on fart when it comes to blocking because that's the one thing that made Brock Bowers so great, right? Because you can use him in any formation that you want possibly want, right? As far as with, with it being in line or lined up in the slot. I, I feel like those guys, Lawson L- Lucky and uh, Delp, kind of struggle from a blocking standpoint. So I really feel like. Those that's the, some of the things that that's gonna be able to help them take their game to a next level. Not not to replace Brock, but be viable options. You know when it comes when they target the tight end position. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then switching to defense, Jarvis, you mentioned that you had your eye on Joseph Jonah Ajanye. Oh yeah, come on now, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw him <laughs> when he got that sack. Yeah, <laughs> and that Wilson, he got, he came around that corner and dog on poop, gave him that little in and out. And, and, and touch the quarterback, and, you know, that's what you want to see from a five-star guy, those big-name guys, because we know this recruiting class that, you know, um, Kirby coming, has coming in, 
number one recruiting class, obviously, you know, five, five star guys, you know, uh, on the defensive side of the football, you know, we we understand what the what the type of college football and the game that, that it is today where it's so offensive oriented, but to be able to see what Kirby Steele's values and bringing those guys in like a Ellis Robinson and a Chris Hope, the five star linebacker, those guys are the guys that are going to be they're going to going to need them to contribute right now. And they're also going to be the future of this team. But, yeah, Joseph Jonah Jaya, he he made me look smart. T. <laughs> <laughs> that uh that front seven was legit on Saturday. Uh, you know, they, they really shine. Gabe Harris was the name I didn't know a whole lot about heading in that he wound up playing really really well shined and you know you saw you saw the stars really pop too cj allen was an absolute stud he's someone i've talked a lot about this offseason it's almost like we've already taken him for granted he's like ah oh, he's the he's the next great linebacker we're just going to plug him in he's not even discussed as much as some of these other guys because it's just assumed he's going to be so good and then of course your guy uh jd in in michael williams man he did his I didn't thing. even want to say it. I didn't even want uh, to say it, man. Go I, ahead. I, I had to bring it up for you. I know, I know you, you just wanted to come in and say, you know, Tanisha's just going to ask about this and that, but Jarvis like, when are we talking Michael Williams? You know, like, that's <laughs> spot for me right there. So, um, but uh, making plays, looking good, um, looking good standing up. Um, so it's just, it's interesting to see how many options they have to, to play with the hand in their dirt or standing up at those linebacker positions. And I think the versatility is going to be really nice for this team as they get ready for Clemson. Well, we got our daily Michael Williams mentioned in, so I think we are all good now. Everybody feeling good? Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I think I think we might need a moving forward. We might have a, like a Michael minute where it's just yeah, I was gonna say just the same thing like a Michael moment. On, yeah. Boom, there it is. And then we, we right. get in and out, you know? Exactly. The Michael moment. Oh, yeah, yeah, there it is. <laughs> I'll be we watching did. tape on him all season. So, yes, <laughs> get ready. I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Love it. Now, what position group? Did you have your eye on? And that's on either side of the ball, Jarvis. You said last week that, and, and you guys kind of mentioned it a few minutes ago, and of course we're going to deep dive into it a little more in the second segment, but you mentioned Ja'Cory Thomas specifically and then a little bit on the D-line. Yeah, I think, you know, overall the secondary, you know, did an uh, outstanding job because they made Carson Beck look a little a little off, a little weird, you know, <laughs> because there were guys running – there were guys. There were some guys. There were uh, there were moments where there were guys open, like um, like you even mentioned, BG. Um, Aaron Smith was open, but Carson Beck kind of missed him. Like you know, he kind of threw it long. So those are some of the things that you kind of like. Okay, as the game went along, you start to see. You know, even if, when Carson Beck was making completions, you still saw those guys right there, right there to make the tackle, and that's what you kind of look for, especially in a game like this, right? Because most of the time you're working on basic things and you're working on basic coverages you know and a lot of times in those basic coverages you're not necessarily supposed to be taking chances like that so you, when you see those guys right there up on the on the wide receiver making those tackles and i feel like you saw that a lot um on saturday and i feel like the secondary did a, a good job overall mm. oh Go ahead, uh, yeah Brian. uh yeah no problem um so uh aguero was somebody who really stuck out for me i thought he yeah. just he played nice. And the other thing that really uh, popped for it being a spring game and a scrimmage and everything was the open field tackling, like just the ability to, to, to wrap and go. And sometimes you don't see that until maybe a couple weeks into the season based on how your team approaches, uh, you know, offseason practices and, and all that sort of thing. So those things really shine to me. And I think it went hand in hand with, again, how that front seven played, right? They allowed the secondary to do what they're able to do. So Aguero really stood out to me. I think Bolden also showed some things, but at the same time, he looks like, you know, he's a young player who needs to take a minute to come along. Uh, but overall, I was impressed with what I saw from, from the secondary. And, and I think Brian, KJ Bolden. Mm -hmm. no, go ahead. I was just saying, um, I think, I think KJ Bolden, you know, did that as well because he was, that dude is a little dark when he, he come when he's diagnosed something, he comes down and go gets it, man. That's what, and that lets you know that, you know, not only you have the athletic ability to be able to, you know, be where you need to be and make those plays, but the knowledge to know where you are, you know, know, know what you know, the defense and knowing where, what your reads are, you know, pre-snap. And then once that ball is snapped, you, you're diagnosing and you're just reacting at, at that point. So I think KJ Bolden did a, a really good job of that. Yeah, he was just, man, he was very sticky out there. 
<laughs> and speaking of them, Brian, you talked about your one-on-one -on -one matchups, really any secondary, any member of the secondary versus any one of the wide receivers. Did any one of those stand out to you? Yeah, I think it goes back to Colby Young and the, just the physicality that that he showed. You know, it's gonna you have these new wide receivers, some of these younger DBs coming along, um, and just the physical nature of these this wide receiver group uh, was impressive to see. And they chucked the ball around a lot between Beck and Stockton, like way more than you I think it was seventy five percent of the offensive plays were, were were chucking it around. Don't expect to see that throughout the season because they still right. are going to want to. They're still going to want to run the ball. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the things that stood out to me were were the wide receivers actually uh, winning a lot of those one on one battles, especially the, some of those top guys in terms of um, in terms of Dom and Colby Young, who we think is going to be probably a top three receiver in this core. Yeah. And Jarvis, you said you wanted to see whichever one on one matchup it was with Monroe Freeland. Did you see anything that stood out? Yeah, I, I think that, you know, he did a solid job. You know, though, that's what you look for when when it comes to, you know, young offensive linemen. He was a guy that got some got a little playing time last year. And we know if he plays well enough, you know, Xavier Trust is a, a, a wily veteran. We understand that he's going to be the starter. But you know Georgia doesn't have any problem at all rotating offensive rotating, line yeah. because we saw that last year with Michael Morris and Dylan Fairchild. So um, I think he's playing his way into that, you know, that type of role because you want to get that that young guy in there so it will be a smooth transition um, uh, once um, Xavier Trust um, eligibility is finally up. <laughs> and I think, too, we saw O-linemen go down uh, last year, we saw Marius Mims go down, and it was just good to have that depth. So, yeah, yes. to see that he's solid this early, you never know where he might be called into action or when he might be called into action this upcoming season. When we come back, we'll debate if Kirby's message was heard when we go between the hedges. This episode of our Atlanta Football Party is brought to you by FanDuel and Monopoly Go. It's playoff time in the NBA. In fact, the play-in round starts tonight. And it's also playoff time in the NHL. Baseball, of course, is in full swing or about 15 games in. And FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150 bucks win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that is safe secure, and easy to use. So what are you waiting for? You can also visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. Again, that's FanDuel.com slash locked on to make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. This episode of our Atlanta football party is also brought to you by Monopoly Go. Now think about this. When you track leaderboards every day, keeping your eyes on the scores, putting all of your heart into it, then you get to see who finally makes it on top. That's right. Obviously, I'm talking about the hit mobile game Monopoly Go. You've probably heard of it because it's been downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great mobile twist on classic Monopoly that you can play anywhere Anytime you can explore hundreds of Monopoly boards from Las Vegas to Camelot to the moon, all while raking in a huge fortune. Charge rent on iconic properties, just like classic Monopoly. You can also charge your friends rent on your iconic properties or go after their Monopoly money by pulling bank heists and taking wrecking balls to their landmarks. But my favorite part is the leaderboards where you can see who's a Monopoly tycoon and who's gone bankrupt. So go get yourself on the charts. Download Monopoly Go now, free on the App Store and on Google Play. So go get yourself on those charts and download the Monopoly Go app free on the App Store and Google Play. Locked On Sports Today is a free 24-7 sports streaming channel that is programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the background noise. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channel apps, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So guys, we talked about this last week, wanting to see if the defense would heed the call 
Kirby Smart said, we have players on our defensive line who can get better. The worst feeling as a coach is when you don't have players that you can get better. There are coaches all across the country right now with a D-line who doesn't have one 300-pounder. We've got several. We just have to continue to get them better and execute at a higher level. So, Brian, with what you saw this past weekend in the G-Day game, did Kirby's message get through to the defense? I think so. I, I was really impressed with with that front seven, like I was saying a, a few minutes ago. Uh, just everybody, really. I mean, there was names that popped that, uh, you know, that have are younger and are just coming up. Raylan Wilson uh, really stood out to me. I thought he he played really well. And then just some of those younger guys. I know I mentioned Gabe Harris. He had Chris Cole, like guys that were getting out there and just and just making plays. And I think the biggest thing for me is that versatility of, OK, they're going to have guys that can rush the passer whether they're, you know, putting their hand in the ground or they're going to be standing up because you got those veteran guys inside with Nazir and Warren uh, Brinson. So I think these other guys are starting to realize what they're capable of and what they're going to be able to do. Or uh, like Joseph Jone Ajay, I think that's uh, that's how you pronounce their name. Uh, hopefully he goes to JJA at some point. Yeah, right? like, yeah. Here, so. <laughs> Help us out here. <laughs> we got to get a nickname for him, but. Yeah, we um, got TID, so, you know, he'll be back yeah. too. So, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah we, got, we got two of them. <laughs> but, um, you know, wind up forcing uh, three picks collectively between both sides, um, you know, and uh, some of these plays were really big. That pick that CJ Allen had, as far as baiting back into that, that was a tremendous, that's like an elite play from a linebacker. So, saw some really, really promising things from the front seven. Yeah, I think this is all the the mental uh, gymnastic play or the mental recess that he's playing with their yeah. have with their minds with, with the guys on the defensive side of the football. I think Kirby is it's just ex, it's just really interesting. I love the the what coaches can be able to do right because they're the subtle messages. The guys read this stuff like they can act like they don't, but they read what's going on. They seeing all they saw all the offensive linemen getting all this love from their coach. They understand that he said they it's a top three offensive line in the country. I guarantee <laughs> because I understand what it's like to have that competition between within the team, right? Between the offensive and defensive side. It's like two separate teams, essentially, for the most part, especially when you're talking about in practice, because everybody trying to win, everybody trying to compete. Everybody want to be able to talk trash in the calf after practice because, like, hey, baby, I whooped that boy butt today. You know, that's what they were able to say because they they made Carson Beck look a little sketchy. And, yeah. You know, <laughs> I, I don't know about y'all, but you know, it was it was moments in that game. I was like, man, what is going on? And what it was, he had to make perfect throws. He had yeah. to put that bad boy in the window like it was game time. But he, because a lot of times, you know, we know, we know spring games are a glorified scrimmage. But those guys didn't take it that way. They didn't come out there and play like that. They came out there and said, you know, we got something to prove. Our coach don't necessarily believe in us like that. He, we, we know, he, we know he, he knows that we can get better, but he needs to be able to see and understand it and put it out on the field and say, you know what? All right, I might be on to something uh, come fall. The thing, too, with that making Beck uncomfortable that was really impressive was no Malachi Starks. Like, he's he's yeah, the best player on defense cool. and collectively over, like, here's D.K. Allen's the mic and he's going to be yeah. calling the plays and communicating, but this is Malachi Starks' defense. Like, he's the one guy you can be like, he's there, we know what he's going to bring to the table. So the fact that they were able to make Beck uncomfortable without the best player on that first-team defense, um, that's, that's, that's really impressive what we saw on Saturday from them. And that's probably why when we look at this recent article on ESPN, for its top 10 co coaches in college football. That's why Kirby's at the top of that list, J.D. And the list includes Kalen DeBoer at two, Kyle Whittingham from Utah, Dabo Sweeney from Clemson, Mike Norvell from Florida State comes in at five, Dan Lanning at Oregon, Steve Sarkeesian at Texas, Lane Kiffin comes in at eight from Ole Miss, Lance Le Leopold at Kansas, and then Ryan Day from Ohio State rounds out the top 10. So my question to you guys is, Jarvis, did they get it right? Of course, Kirby's number one, right? Yeah. You know, there was only two other other uh, other head coaches in, you know, the FBS that have won a, a national championship, yeah. you know. So I think that Kirby being at the top, I have no issue with that. But I don't know if I'm putting Kyler DeBoer at number two. I mean, mm. I, I thought mean, that I was an interesting one, too. 
And I think he kind of got a little love because he's the head coach at Alabama right now. I was a yeah. good enough coach to be able to be the head coach for the Alabama to replace Nick Saban. So that means I'm supposed to be on the list? Uh, that, 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 I don't know about that one. But, yeah, yeah. I, there are some definitely some some familiar names in there as far as – I think Lance Leopold, we talked about that pre, pre-show. pre I feel like he's a, a coach that's probably not going to be at Kansas for too much longer um, because somebody's going to come with the bag, you know, if if if, if one of those prominent – uh, uh, head coaching position co- pops open um, after this season. Yeah. The uh, Kalen DeBoer being number two, that's one of these. Yeah, that was probably like, the one. Yeah. Well, it's just, it's also kind of goes back to this whole thing of like ESPN and the SEC are just tied at the hip. Like oh, yeah. if he's still, if he's still the coach for Washington, is he two on this list or is he right. more? Or because he, I or mean, six. you yeah. know, and I know yeah. he beat yeah. Dan Lanning twice head to head, but they're kind of, I would put them kind of in that same, you know, uh, balance. I love the fact that they put Kyle Whittingham number three. Uh, I just think he's a a very underrated coach. He's probably number two for me, but let's be honest. I think two is completely up for grabs over the course of this next season and what happens moving forward. If anything, I would probably bump, I I think what Mike Norvell, I know that that was mine. I know they ended on a sour sour note in that orange bowl game and the blowout, but the teams and the raw and like all of that, but I'd probably have Norvell at two or three. I, I would definitely have him higher on that list. I think he's been really impressive over the last few years and, the end of the season just overshadowed what he's been able to accomplish in Tallahassee the last handful of seasons. Yeah, the quarterback shuffle alone for him being able to finish the season undefeated, I thought yeah. four was a little low for him as well. And also agree with you guys, I thought two for Kalen DeBoer was probably just the default button because you're now the head coach of Alabama. One other thing real quick on that. How weird is it to look at that list? And I know that we know they're gone and they've one's retired yeah. and to the NFL, but no Saban. No Harbaugh. Harbaugh like, it's yeah. just great. You're like, Kirby, it's, he's definitely one. And then I had no idea who they were going to put two when you sent me that list. You know, it's mm-hmm. just like, okay, like, you got to pick somebody. I mean, I'm probably right. like, not necessarily <laughs> because somebody's got to be two. So right. you know what? You know what? To not see another name that we know that well in a Harbaugh or Saban. So. And you know what that does? Is it, it makes people who are put these articles together, the writers, they, they got to do a little bit more homework. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I, yeah. I, think, I think you need to go back and try again. You got yeah. Caleb DeBoer at number two, the number two head coach in the country, man. Come on. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there are some more viable candidates that can be in that, like like you mentioned with Mike Novell and Kyle Woodham. When we come back, we'll talk about the effect of the spring portal window and what it may or may not mean for the dogs on the other side. This episode of the Atlanta Football Party is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just a job board. It helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're probably looking in the wrong place. And 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. So get help with LinkedIn. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college. LinkedIn has terms and conditions that do apply. All right, guys, we know that today is going to be a very intriguing and interesting day across the country, just watching the movement in and out of the spring transfer portal. The window opened this morning, and obviously, Andrew Paul, we kind of got word about that last night that he's going into the transfer portal, but the running back room still has seven backs. So what, if anything, will this backfield be missing without Paul for the dogs, Jarvis? It'd be uh, nothing. <laughs> like I saw, I saw as long as one going to be on the field, he might miss that first game. Trevor Etienne ain't going to be, he, I'll be I'm, I'm, I'm eased. Uh, and Robertson with his big behind running out, <laughs> returning that rock number zero. Yeah, I'm cool. Long zero and one out there. I am cool. I think George is going to be good to go. But, you know, we know Paul has some talent, right? Because it sure. just seems like, you know, <laughs> when Georgia has the old school way, hey, wait your turn. 
you going once you get your turn, you're gonna be all right. You know, as long as you're there by your junior year, you're gonna go to the NFL and all that stuff. Well, Andrew Paul got took it taking a step back because you know Mr. ETN came in and said, Hey man, I'm here, guys. I'm gonna be your, your lead back. I might miss that first game, but uh I will be back for the rest of them. So yeah, I'm not I'm not too concerned about it. But yeah, I think Andrew Paul should land somewhere pretty quickly because it's not like he doesn't have any talent. Hmm. It's it's just so true the way you say that. It, eh, nothing, you know. There's just so many other options. There's so many other backs where. Yeah, I'll like, yeah, be concerned. Yeah, I mean, he's a, he's a nice football player, but it's like, eh, I mean, they're just so. It's it's not like the room's two or three deep to where. Okay, I did like, however, and I think this is something that recruits and players who come in and out of programs and transfer portal, like they gave him opportunities on Saturday. He wound up scoring a touchdown. Yep. Kirby and him, I would almost guarantee that they had a conversation heading into this where he was going to transfer, right? But you're going to get reps. We'll try to get you in some. Let's feature you a little bit. Let's get this new film on tape so we can send it to other people and get you in the right spot. Um, I I think that that's really important as, uh, you know, Kirby always talks about relationships, relationships, relationships. And and these coaches are navigating this transfer portal as it gets – crazier and crazier and more active and more involved. So I think the fact that he actually did that for him is, is big and kind of one of those sneaky small storylines from, from Saturday. Yeah, I, I think so as well. And when we look across the, the transfer portal, you kind of think about any, or the program rather, and you think about what we saw on G day, you think about what we've heard in and out of the spring. And so Brian, I was thinking from what you've seen so far, is there anyone whom you suspect might go into the portal today? Yeah, there's a couple names I have written down. One was Arian Smith, and it was interesting heading into the game on Saturday. I was like, okay, he's been hyped. There's this, there's that. Didn't really perform well. However, before we did this, I went back and listened to the whole press conference from Kirby, and he specifically named four to five wide receivers. Arian Smith was included in that in terms of his physicality and special team, like all of it. So he lumped him into the – group of praise of the physicality at wide receiver. I'm like, all right, that guy's not going anywhere. Just based on the way he said it and what he said, I was like, okay, the one name, and I don't have any, this is just a, just a thought because I think that wide receiver room is very crowded and somebody, you know, we're going to have two or three odd men out. And I think it might be Anthony Evans just in terms of Mm -hmm. opportunities. You know, he popped a little bit towards the end of the season last year. Didn't really do too much in G day. He's heading into his second season. He's going to want to get reps and opportunities and he could be a really good, nice player and wind up this season with, you know, 18 catches for one touchdown and 150 yards. And we could still be like, oh, but he's going to be good. You know, he's the type of guy who I think is going to need and want opportunities at some point. So I wouldn't be shocked to see his name in there. And then the only other name I have on defense is Chaz Chambliss, just because that linebacking course is so damn good. He might yeah. not get any opportunities. He's getting older as well. So if he has aspirations to play at the next level, he's someone I could potentially see hopping in the portal too. Yeah. How about you, James? Well, I wouldn't say I have a name to, you know, um, that is going to jump in the portal, but I do have a name that I wasn't necessarily impressed by, and they might need to go into the portal to go get another another one. That's quarterback. Gunner Stockton, I feel like once you – we know that it, the, the mobility piece wasn't going to be able to be on display, right? And – like BG talked about, seventy five percent throwing a, throwing a football. We know that was on purpose, right? That that wasn't a you know a coincidence. So with him just standing back there and throwing the football, I wasn't too impressed. So I wouldn't be surprised if Georgia goes out and go gets another goes in and get an experienced quarterback in that transfer portal. I just would not be surprised at all because we understand what Kirby, how many quarterback Kirby wants. He wants to be able to have several guys, you know, that he know outside of Carson Beck. Well, a couple of guys out of car, outside of Carson Beck that, hey, in case something happens, breaking case of emergency, I have ease. I'm at ease that he will be able to come and get the job done. So I really feel like that that might be a, a position that Kirby might be on the search for um, starting today. Yeah. And Brian, speaking of on the search, when you look at the dogs roster, do you see any areas that kind of catch your attention where maybe Georgia can also benefit from getting some players out of the transfer portal. 
I would think maybe one more DB, just like one more, one more corner. And that's something Kirby alluded to in his, uh, just in terms of having options, he likes to have all sorts of, you know, you're going to have five DBs out there in different spots and guys that can play the nickel and different, you know, so I, I think he just loves continually to have options there. So I could see him adding a depth piece. I thought heading into Saturday, maybe it's, a, maybe it's a piece in that defensive line, but I, I think the way that people play, that's not necessarily a, a huge concern and that linebacking core is they're they're good to, they're good to go yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, they're ready to roll so if anything i think it's quarterback and then uh i think it might be maybe one more uh, body a, a, in the db spot how about you jarvis any areas of need any other areas of need for the dogs where maybe they can get a quality player out of the portal um, outside of quarterback, no, nah, I think they're pretty much set because when you, you think about what the defense did, we we talked about the concerns um, Kirby had coming into this game, and you know talking about the and, and pressing these guys up front on the defense side. Well, I need y'all boys to step up, and I think that we saw that. And um, like they said, the smell Monday didn't even play. You know, to your point, BG, like, and we still are saying, man, they got to look deep and fast and young and all that stuff. And like, and the leader of the defense wasn't even out there. So when you think about that aspect of it, it's just like, man, these cats are locked and loaded, and we're going to be looking at this team saying, uh, you know what? Not too surprised that they are in this college football playoff, looking to make some noise. Thanks for stopping by the Atlanta football party, your home for the best Georgia Bulldogs football talk. Like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and we're free and available wherever you download your podcasts. We'll see you on the Atlanta sports party Thursday.